Last week, Silicon Valley Bank failed after a multi-billion dollar bank run along with two other banks, namely Signature Bank and Silvergate Bank. And while a dramatic financial breakdown was looming, there were a lot of bad takes floating around on social media platforms, arguably fueling concerns about the stability of the US banking system. The hashtag, hashtag bank crash, branded on Twitter and some prominent social media figures were even accused of using their social media megaphone for fear-mongering tactics and attempts of trying to serve their own financial interests at the cost of massive societal harm. Congressman Patrick McHenry, who is the chairman of the US Financial Services Committee, referred to the turmoil as the first Twitter-fueled bank run. And the crew from the All In Investing podcast, including Jason Calacanis and David Sachs, were particularly active on Twitter during this period of turmoil, sharing their thoughts on the situation in the banking sector. Now, some people have raised questions regarding the motives these guys may have and are accusing them of market manipulation. There's an actual war brewing between Mark Hodes and David Sachs in particular. And in this video, we'll take a closer look at the accusations. And so without further ado, let's get started. Hey there, my name is Ryan Zellman and this video will consist of three chapters. First, I want to give you some background information on the social media war between David Sachs and Mark Cohodes. Who are these guys and why are they at each other's throats? The second chapter will then focus on the allegations that Mark Cohodes has shared on Twitter over the past couple of days. More specifically, he's accusing David Sachs of three separate counts of fraudulent behavior and then in the last chapter, I'll outline what I think the Securities and Exchange Commission, so the SEC, should do now. And before we get into the first chapter, I want to get one thing straight. All I'm trying to do here in this video is to give you an overview of the allegations that have been made. And of course, we should give David Sachs a chance to defend himself. And hopefully he'll soon answer a lot of the questions that have been asked on Twitter in particular that have so far been left unanswered. So let's start with chapter number one. Starting last Saturday, Marco Hodes started very aggressively calling out David Sachs on Twitter for being a hypocrite, for lying publicly and intentionally provoking a bank run through his social media channels and with the help of his private venture capital network. David Sachs, of course, didn't shy away and very quickly the two were attacking each other personally and Cohodes even pulled out some very questionable comments David Sachs made on the topic of date rape in one of Peter Thiel's books. Now, David Sachs may be messing with the wrong guy here, because ever since last weekend, Marco Hodes seems to be on a mission. He wants to convict Sachs of market manipulation and wants the SEC to investigate what has really been going on behind the scenes. So just to provide some background context here, who is this Mark Cohodes? Well, he's a famous short seller with 40 years of experience and known for exposing failing business models and fraudulent management teams by using his own investigative methods to uncover corporate wrongdoing. More recently, he has made a name for himself as the guy who accused Sam Bankman-Fried of fraud before his crypto exchange FTX went bankrupt. And more generally, he's also ruthlessly going after individual bad guys, especially in the finance world and trying to expose their true motives. David Sachs, on the other end, he's part of the infamous PayPal Mafia, a group of former PayPal employees. He's a billionaire and more recently known for co-founding the early stage VC fund Graph Ventures and being the co-host of the All In podcast together with Jason Calacanis, Mr. Buffett 2.0, Shamath and David Friedberg. Oh yeah, and he's also made headlines for throwing a $1.4 million birthday party back in 2012. So he's not particularly known for being humble and having a small ego. This brings us to the second chapter of this video. The three allegations that Mark Cahodes has put out on Twitter. The first one is the claim that David Sachs and his friend Jason have been involved in market manipulation practices by spreading fear about the stability of the US banking system of their social media accounts. The allegation is that David Sachs was shorting Silicon Valley Bank, so the bank that no longer trades publicly after it was closed by the California Department of Financial Protection and or First Republic Bank, so the bank whose stock dropped more than 80% after worries emerged about depositors pulling cash from several 
mid-sized banks. Cohodes thinks the SEC needs to investigate whether David Sachs and Jason Calacanis were trading any of these securities in the time period of the last few weeks of bank turmoil. So were they shorting any of the stocks or buying put options, which is just another way of benefiting from falling stock prices while they were at the same time trying their best to provoke a bank run that would lead to falling bank share prices. He tweeted, what is the chance that people in the David Sachs circle got short SVB and First Republic before the run they caused? Personally, I think the tweets by Sachs weren't as suspicious as the ones by Jason. I'll just show you a couple of yeah, tweets on screen right now. But the worst one was probably one that Jason already deleted by now that read as follows. Who else is going to buy some guns, provisions and gasoline tomorrow? I mean, in my last video, I discussed what Eggman was sharing on the SVB situation on Twitter. And you might question Eggman's integrity, of course, but I think he was genuinely trying to help by tweeting things like the tweet that I just showed you. That's most certainly not helpful in any kind of way. Now, on top of the accusation that they were intentionally trying to spread panic on social media, Cahodis was sharing this message, which he received in his inbox which claims that Sex and his friends were actually using their VC network to cause the SVB failure by telling their VC portfolio companies, so SVB customers, to transfer money to other banks, which ultimately forced SVB to try to raise equity and sell bonds that they were planning to hold to maturity. Eventually, the losses that they had to take on these bond sales were too large and the whole thing Collapse. The message that Cahode shared reads as follows. I wanted to let you know that David Sachs and his crew were sending around emails to all their friends to pull money from First Republic before Silicon Valley Bank went down. The reason that I know is that one of his friends copied and pasted a generic fearmongering message. Nothing wrong with pulling deposits, but my sense is that Sachs et al were being pretty vocal with their network about it. And again, just to be clear, so far there is no actual proof of these accusations and David Sachs himself has been denying them on his Twitter account. So let's move on to the second claim. Marco Hodes accuses David Sachs of withdrawing money from SVB early because he had some kind of insider information. He tweeted, by the way, how much did you and your quote unquote companies pull from SVB prior to them failing. I will bet you got the quote unquote wink. And in fact, some SVB depositors were able to withdraw money from the bank while others were still in the dark about the whole situation. There's a great write up titled Who Knew What When? published on a blog called The SEC in Action. Let me just quote a short passage from that article. In the 24 hour period between March 8th, the bond sale date and March 9th, public announcement date. SVB bank depositors, many of whom are incredibly sophisticated and well-connected, had withdrawn a massive $45 billion from the bank. Hmm. It's curious to some that the bank run somehow started before SVB's public announcements on March 9th. It's almost as if a number of very lucky folk knew a great deal about what was going on before Joe Public did. And the same depositors who withdrew their funds had contractual agreements which required them to keep their deposits at the bank or face severe penalties. Somehow, these depositors were so desperate to yank their deposits that they willingly violated those agreements and sustained the penalties. I'm not sure what information these depositors learned that caused them to act so hastily without regard to their agreement and breach consequences. So as outlined, Silicon Valley Bank announced its problematic financial condition on Thursday, March 9th, after the stock market closed. There's a statement by Graft Funds shared by Marco Hodes on Twitter that outlines that the fund transferred any money they had at SVB to other banks on Thursday, but it doesn't specify when on Thursday. Again, we can only speculate when this transaction took place after the public announcement or before, and I think only the SEC will be able to find out. And then the third allegation by Marco Hodes is that David Sachs and his friends were pump and dumping various crypto coins. Pump and dump tactics are a form of securities fraud that involves inflating the price of a stock or an asset through false and misleading positive statements in order to sell the cheaply purchased stock at a higher price. Cahodes claims that they used both their social media accounts with hundreds of thousands of followers and even so-called 
burner accounts for these pump and dump schemes. And he most prominently shared a video from the All In Investor podcast from 2021, in which they arguably brag about buying big amounts of Solana at a discount. 1 billion US dollars in Chamath case. So they were early investors in this crypto technology and certainly benefited from the yeah, performance of this asset. Let me just show you that clip real quick. Sachs, I gotta say, I think I think your AUM is positively correlated with the bags under your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> if you mean it's getting bigger, you're correct. I mean, fuck, yeah. they're, hiding, they're heavy. <laughs> Good lord. They're heavy, <laughs> dragging you down. That's where you're hiding all that Solana in your fucking, <laughs> under your eyes. Jesus. Oh. A, you better clear that Solana position. What's your lockup, 24 months? <laughs> fuck no, he's trying to sell it to me on text message. <laughs> yeah, of course we're he is. We're negotiating <laughs> discounts. I just had the fact hey, you're fucking the whole thing up. Bro, you don't, <laughs> oh, you don't think to keep? You, I'm hodling. I'm hodling. You think I buy hundreds hodling. of millions of dollars of anything without a discount? Everything is a discount. Everything's discounted. You want to clear that position in an LLC? Are you saying I got a billion dollars of Solana? No, bro. I'm saying Ooh. I have one. But, you know, I brought it at a discount. But you're holding, correct? Ish. Yes. Okay. Yeah, me too. <laughs> well, I mean okay, to give you some more context here, Solana is actually widely regarded as the personal project of Sam Bankman Fried, who is now facing a life in prison for fraud. I'm sure you are all very well aware of that. But the run from three dollars to two hundred and sixty seven dollars was still one of the most spectacular runs in the crypto world. And my understanding is that Solana was a complete scam. If you ask me a lot of things in the crypto world seem very scammy, but I've read that apparently Solana was one of the bigger scams in the crypto world. Later in the podcast, David Sachs actually clarifies that he was not directly investing in Solana, but invested in a company called Multicoin in 2017. And this company took part in Solana's ICO. So that's basically the IPO equivalent in the crypto world. So to be fair, I think Cahodis is a little off here because David Sachs himself was not actively trading Solana himself. And again, we have no insights into the trading activities of David Sachs or Multicoin. Which brings us to the last chapter of this video. What should the SEC do now? So far, there is no proof of David Sachs doing anything illegal. But Cohodes certainly thinks that all of these hints combined smell a little fishy. So if the SEC decides to take a closer look at Sachs and his friends, the investigation should be fairly straightforward. What did Sachs know and when? If he knew some things, did he make trades based on any insider information? Did he short certain banks before tweeting about the instability of banks? When did Graph Ventures and their portfolio companies pull their money from SVB? Did Sachs communicate with other funds and was he invested in any of them? What did they know and when? And did they trade on that information? The SEC could most certainly get access to information that we would never be able to access. For example, they could investigate group chats, emails and other private conversations. Okay, let me know what you think of this whole situation in the comments down below. I'm mainly sharing what Cahodis put out on Twitter here. And if you wonder what I think of it, well, I don't really know. There's no actual proof, but I cannot deny that certain actions seem a little suspicious and I'm happy to sit on the sidelines and observe how this whole situation unfolds. Take care.